So you've got some partitioning stuff for us today. Yeah, I thought we'd talk a bit about partitioning today because we get a number of questions on Ask Tom about partitioning, not necessarily about the usage in terms of getting partition pruning and, and those kind of things. It's more when it comes to doing things like identifying particular partitions, for example, if I want to archive a partition off, uh, we have sometimes some difficulties understanding the use of the data dictionary to identify them. A lot of people will do things like name their partitions in such a way that it sort of indicates what the partition's about, like they might call their partition P2000 for the year 2000. But in reality, the only accurate way of knowing where a partition is defined and what its boundaries are, are looking at the high value column in user tab partitions. What's the problem with that? Well, let's do a describe on user tab partitions. You can see it's a long column. Now, if I'm trying to work out, for example, which partition pertains to data that's, say, five years old, well, that's a bit of a drama. So let's see what happens if I try and use, like, high value in, a, say, a predicate. So I'm, in this case, I'm trying to get all the partitions for my table called T, where the high value is less than, say, 50, even though that's a nice simple option. But I have a problem here. I can't use that long value in a predicate. Why is the high value a long data type? Oh, well, you've got to remember that partitioning goes back to like 8.0. That's a long time ago. Even though we did have the clogged database in, in 8.0, partitioning almost even predates that because we had partition views in 7.3. Now, a partitioning strategy could be based on number, could be based on date, uh, could be based on just about anything. So. In those days, the way you represented an arbitrary piece of information, because we didn't have, like, for example, sys.any data, was generally in a long. That's pretty much how we did it. So it's more of a historical reason. And of course, as we move through the various versions of Oracle, people get upset if we say, look, we're just going to change that data type, and all the scripts you might have already had will no longer work. So high value has been long for a long time, and will probably stay like that. So the way we work around that in, when it comes to Ask Tom questions is there's a number of strategies. Um, the most common one we see is we use a PL SQL function. So let's see how we can do that. So one of the nice things with PL SQL is I can select a long column straight into a bar chart too if I think it's not going to blow its limits. Obviously a long can be much bigger, but for partitioning we're fairly confident it's not going to be bigger. So here's a function here I've got, you can see which actually just simply says, given the table name and a function name, sorry, given the table name and a partition name, I can just select the high value in, and then I can actually return that as a bar chart two. Once it's a bar chart two, now I can use it in normal queries. So the way I would do that if I was trying to investigate uh, the high value as a bar chart two is, for example, I can do select table name, partition name, and then call my function with those two parameters as well. And I'll just restrict my information this, day, this time to um, tables T and T1 because I know they are um, already partitioned. And there you go. You can see that now the high value comes back to looking just like it did before, but it's actually now a string. So now I can do things like where clauses and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. And that's the most common way you'll see of interrogating a long value from the partitions table, dictionary table. I'm not very good at PL SQL. Is there any way I can avoid doing a PL SQL function for this? Oh, I think you're underselling your PL SQL skills more than, uh, more than you give out. You're pretty good at PL SQL from what I've seen. But the reality is, yeah, for some developers, uh, they're not allowed to create PL SQL functions. There's a concern about cluttering of the data dictionary and, and things like that, or security risks, which are all nonsense, but it does happen out there in the real world. So what you can do is, in, if you're on version 12, you can define that PL SQL function that only exists for the lifetime of that query. Let's have a look about here. So you can see here I've got my function now, but it no longer exists inside the database dictionary. What it is, is that just defines, it's just defined within the with clause. It's just sitting there within the with clause, and it only exists for the lifetime of the query. You can see there I run the query in the same way, and it looks like that PL SQL function exists, but it only exists within the with statement. So you can do that in Oracle 12. If you're not on Oracle 12, if you're still on Oracle 11, there's a few little tricks we can still do. One of the ways you can do it is use some XML DB features 
Now with XMLDB, you can use something like DBMS XML Gem, which gives you XML generation from a query. Now even though the high value is defined as a long, converting it as an XML output gets it back as effectively a clob. Now with a little bit of extract value and a little bit of parsing, we can take the XML that comes out and turn it back into our prerequisite columns using the standard XML table syntax. That way, in the same way, I've managed to get access to the high value column and I'm not dealing with it as a long anymore. But this returns a var chart too. What if my partitioning column is a number or a date? Well, that's true, but don't forget, it's now just a string. So what I can do, I can parse that string however I like. If it's just a numeric value, I can just bang a two number around that and I can get the high value as a numeric and do whatever calculations I need on that. If it's a date, you can see the syntax of the format of the date. It's a little bit, it's the full D2 date function. So I'd need to probably strip some of that out and put my own custom two date function around it. But you can see the format is fixed. We know it's YYYY MMDD followed by the hours. Given that it's fixed the date data type, we can do a simple substring. And as you can see, I can actually just do a substring here, starting at the right column, pick out just the bits I want. And now it's a date column. So once again, doing things like how old is the partition data? Is it more than five years old? I can now do using that. Can I use this technique for other long columns that are in the dictionary? And yeah, you can do that for anything. A uh, couple of other dictionary views which are obviously showing their vintage, you could say. If you look at uh, user views and user constraints and similar views like that, then they've got long columns as well. But one of the cool things is, you know, we, we like to listen to our customers. If you do a describe on user views and user constraints, probably a better one, you can see we've actually now got varchar2 equivalents of those original long columns. So what we've tried to do here is value add to those dictionary views so you're not sort of um, stuck with dealing with long columns all the time. We obviously don't want to get rid of the long columns because that would break backward compatibility. But yeah, there you go. Right? You can see actually the high value being a long column isn't really such a big drama anymore. But still, a very good question to ask and hopefully it's going to help a lot of the Ask Tom users out there. Anyway, for those that are watching, see you all next time.